Okay, welcome to theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's uh, always extensive coverage of what's going on in technology. SiliconAngle.com is the reference point for innovation, and uh, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and uh, we are here in Orlando, Florida, live for IBM Edge 2012, which is their innovation conference around storage technology. The Cube will be here for two days broadcasting live, wall-to-wall -wall coverage of what's happening within IBM, around storage, around converged infrastructure. We're bringing to you live from the Cube. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon and I'm joined with my co-host this week. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org and we're here in Orlando and we're going to give you wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Edge. John, um, we've been, we're on the summer tour. It's not even summer yet, we're on the summer tour. But um, So uh, two weeks ago we were at SAP Sapphire, last week at EMC World we're here at IBM Edge. At Edge is a conference that um, really s was spawned out of a sort of an informal customer conference that occurred last year and um, IBM realized that it really needed to have a storage event. So we've got, you know, the plan was to have 1,500 people here. The, uh, evidently it's sold out, uh, and the number is closer to 2,000, so uh, registered. I think it's 1,900 registered, so there'll probably be at least 16 or 1,700 that show up here. And uh, as always, the Cube will be covering this wall to wall. We've got the executives, we've got customers, we've got independent perspectives, we've got analysts. We're also joined by our colleague, John MacArthur. John, welcome. Thank you, Dave, great to be here. I appreciate the uh, uh, invitation and uh, looking forward to a great event today. So, uh, John's, uh, at its peak, IBM held 50% of the computer industry's revenue and two-thirds of its profits. Um, it obviously had you know, the, the industry's first known monopoly and we all know the story of how that changed with the personal computer. Over the course of the last 20 years, IBM's strategy has changed dramatically as it's moved more towards software and services. About 10 years ago, IBM started to de-invest in storage uh, under the leadership of Bill Zeitler. Uh, Bill Zeitler actually made a statement to me at one point. He said that, you know, something's got to give. He said the industry's R&D is increasing at 16% a year, but the revenues are only increasing at 9% per year. So what gave was storage investment. So IBM actually de-invested in storage. It sold off its controller business, as you recall. Uh, it sold the hard disk drive business, which was a smart move. Um, and, and as a result, it began to lose share. About five years ago, under the direction of uh, its new leader under uh, STG, Rod Atkins, it began to reinvest in storage. It made an acquisition of a company called Diligent to get into the backup business. It acquired XIV, recently, more recently it acquired uh, Storewise. Over the course of that time frame, it invented uh, the SAN volume controller, one of the few innovations that we've seen from some of the big whales, I mean really new innovations. Um, and that product has done very well. So IBM is retooling the portfolio, um, really trying to get back its storage mojo. And that's what we're going to be talking about here today. Can IBM get back its storage mojo? I think one of the things that's interesting about IBM is that whole area of investment. As you remember, they had a, a huge investment at IBM Albaden. Um, they were designing a lot of their own systems. Um, when I started looking at the kinds of acquisitions that they make versus the acquisitions that some of the competitors make is really interesting because IBM seems to like to buy, a, a get technology at a relatively early stage of development, things that are then embeddable into um, uh, systems and platforms that they have. So you look at the diligent application, uh, uh, acquisition, you look at Storewise ac acquisition, you look at, um, uh, uh, XIV is a little, a little different, uh, I even look at the relationship that they've got going with Actifio right now. These are things that they can layer onto their platform that they can uh, invest in, but they don't have to do all of the investment themselves. They can they can uh, leverage the, the venture community to do some of that. Yeah, I mean, Dave, I mean, my, my take on IBM right now is that, um, you know, if you look at historically, IBM has been probably one of the most successful pivots, turnarounds and transformations in, in the computer business. As you mentioned, they were a leader in, in everything in the computer business in the you know, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And, you know, but late 80s, they really had that you know, bloatedness of, of, uh, with client-server you know, booming the mainframe, and it's well documented. But they've since transformed themselves um, over the past decade. But storage is interesting, interesting uh, innovation area for IBM because it's been kind of boring, slow industry, but now all of a sudden, the past two years, we've been with theCUBE uh, documenting the innovation around flash and around storage, and that's really the key opportunity for IBM. And, and relative to the market, Dave, my observation is that you know, we've been covering big data and cloud computing, for instance, and 
it really is the perfect storm for a technology company and a services company like IBM to come in and actually re-win and expand out their base. And, and specifically, the research you guys done around converged infrastructure is, is compelling. So, converged infrastructure represents a half a trillion dollar opportunity in the market size, um, because two thirds of all enterprises have to deploy some sort of converged infrastructure, um, retool and or tweak to their infrastructure. So, you know, Oracle, HP, EMC, IBM, all the big guys have to kind of figure out what their converged infrastructure strategy will be, and it's 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 unique now in the sense the requirements are different. It's not siloed or stove as you say, Dave, it really has to work across boundaries and across applications. So data, uh, something that we've been talking about heavily at SiliconANGLE Wikibon, is a key driver in this. And I think IBM, if they can put together their portfolio of storage with technology, they could really make a good run at the infrastructure, converge infrastructure market. So, um, so that's the way I see it. It's a really an integrated set of compute, storage, and networking. So I see that as a big market opportunity. What I'd like to get your guys' take on this, this week is, um, as the analysts, what, what do you make of the converged infrastructure market, the business models behind it, and also what products and technologies does IBM need to have vis-a-vis -vis their competitors? So, uh, Dave, what do you, what, what's your take your cut, and then John, I'd like to get your perspective on Well, I think, on John, the first thing I would say is you're right on. Um, when you look at IBM and you think about the, at the top of the show, we were talking about, you know, can IBM get back its storage mojo? How does IBM compete in this storage market, this $50 billion storage market? And I think you hit right on it. IBM's strength is integration. IBM's pure systems announcement, its pure flex announcement, validated the market for converged infrastructure. Uh, in fact, David Floyer wrote a piece to that effect. Now, of course, we all know that in 2009, VCE came out with VBlock. We had Mike Capellas on theCUBE last week. IBM's entry into that market really validates the concept. And IBM has a lot to lose and has a lot to gain. So IBM was not messing around. They started that with a convert, that, that initiative with a, uh, for converged infrastructure, what they call integrated systems, with a blank sheet of paper. They, they tore down their, their mindsets and they started from scratch, they acquired BNT, they have something called scale-in networking. Uh, they're essentially totally recasting their blade server business. Now, in terms of what I think about that market, as you said, it's, it's a $400 billion total available market that comprises server storage and network. I rounded up to half a trillion. It's a half a trillion, <laughs> well it'll get there. Sounds it's, better. It's absolutely enormous. And as I said, IBM has a lot to lose, and it, but it's got a lot to gain. Now, IBM's unique differentiation in that market I see as twofold. One, and I think this is the most important, it is embedded knowledge and codified knowledge from its, its services and its software business into its systems so that it can align and optimize for workloads and applications, and that is unique. We asked Prasad Rampali at the VSpecs announcement, is that possible? Can you do that? And he, he said, we are just starting to do that. Well, well Dave, Dave, I want to ask your, your perspective on this, because you know, we talked to HP, we're here at IBM, we've talked to IBM in the past, and all the big vendors, and even startups for that matter, around Flash. The new architectures that are out there are obviously driving this. The question is, we know HP and IBM have the tools. I mean, IBM has got systems management expertise up and down across the applications, across their servers, now storage. Um, is it a storage solution? And the question is, um, how fast can they retool? Yep. And, and that's going to be ultimately what I'm going to look for is not so much the mega announcement, like a big launch, you know, new product. I think they got the tools. So I'd like to know from you guys, what do they need to do to retool and to get to the marketplace with these integrated solutions. So I think the, so the second part of their innovation here is storage. Now, storage wasn't a build up from the ground. So they, they, if they're plugging in the V7000 into their converged infrastructure, their integrated system strategy. Now, John, as you know, that storage that they're plugging in is the V7000. So IBM is the only systems company, I believe, I think I'm correct in this statement, that actually will allow you to plug, no, that's not true, Hitachi will allow you to do this yeah. as well, but yeah. to plug in other people's storage. But Hitachi in the systems and server business is you know, nothing compared to IBM. So IBM really is a, a major whale saying, we will allow you to connect virtually anybody's storage into our converged infrastructure and we validate it, we'll sell it as a single SKU. So the, the trend in this business is towards what we call these reference architectures, which are these Chinese menus of choice. But people want the simplicity of a single SKU. IBM, with its pure systems announcement, is attempting to give the world the best of both. Yeah. Well, I, I think one of the, if you have, I think you have to step back just a little bit further when, if you look at some of the missteps that 
were made um, before the current uh, regime. What, what we've got is we had we had IBM actually being sort of broken up into very small business units, and with those small business units focused only on their area, IBM didn't do very well. And then through the um, through the late 90s and through 2000, things got very much pulled back together. Pulling that back together was uh, amazing because, as as one uh, former IBM storage exec said to me. We've now got lots of ways to make margin. That that you know, if you're if you're in the services business, if you're in the application outsourcing business, if you are in the business process outsourcing business, you know, you can sell servers, you can sell storage, and you can and you and with IBM Global Finance, um, you've got a lot that you can pull together um, uh, to other ways to make money. I think with the with the sand volume controller, one of the interesting things is that they can use that as a, a data. They can use that both to virtualize other people's storage, but they can also use it as a data migration platform. Um, they can use that to pull assets into the IBM Global Finance capabilities to help people sort of re-engineer their balance sheets. Um, so I think there's a lot of ways that they can contribute um, uh, to IBM's bottom line, and that's been that's been I, there's, there are very few companies that have that. Full set of capabilities. What do you think about their ability to kind of retool and pull it all together? Obviously, they're you know just separate groups, just kind of decoupled. Now they're kind of coming together. Um, we've been talking about software as a big innovator in storage, obviously with tiering, and now you have mm. Flash. Kind of these architectures are changing. We're seeing new use cases, uh, kind of old way, new way. What, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think about their ability to uh, retool? And two, is that consistent with what you're seeing as architecturally, uh, directionally correct? Yeah. So. Um, so I'll go back to the example of where they're investing in R&D. So they don't have to do it all themselves. Now they're partnering up with other companies to deliver some of this sort of next generation platform. So the, the, the notion, for example, of a single uh, data repository for backup and archive. So they've got, they've got some of their own products that they brought in from, from, um, from the acquisition of Diligent with Protect here, but they've also got uh, relationships with other other companies where they're running their they're running their systems on an IBM platform. So IBM sells servers, sells storage, but they don't have to necessarily make the investment in the data management layer. Um, so I think that's one trend that we're going to see IBM expand on. I think it's also important to point out in 2011, IBM actually outperformed Apple uh, as a, as a stock. And so IBM as a company is doing incredibly well. It throws off a huge amount of free cash flow. Um, and so it's a very successful business model. Now that business model is largely led by services. And when, it, when you have a business model, which is, was Gerstner's transformation, that's largely led by, led by services, what suffers is, is, is the product side. Now IBM is really unique in that it has a very strong product portfolio and it is the services giant. So the question comes down, from, from a product standpoint, a technology standpoint, how does IBM compete? And the way it competes is, it certainly leverages services business, but that's not been sufficient for IBM to do, you know, dominate the market. So it is, it, at this event, to really- To dominate the storage, the storage market. market. That's yeah, correct. Let's be, let's be that, that's clear. what I mean, right, we're talking right, about storage. Right. So, but, right. so in the context of this event, IBM is talking about reinvigorating its portfolio. It's not making a ton of new announcements per se, but it's right. really emphasizing the breadth and depth of its portfolio. Well, we heard some we heard some rumblings last night, Dave, about some performance improvements and some uh, some some little announcements that they'll make around storage. But to me, my, the big takeaway for me about IBM is is that um, they were once a leader in storage. Obviously, you mentioned John mentioned the Almaden in, in California. You know, in, inventors of disk and really innovations around disk technologies back going back to the mainframe days. But what's interesting about storage now is it's not about storage per se. And if you look at the leader in storage, uh, EMC overtook uh, IBM in storage in the 90s. Mm -hmm. EMC is transforming away from being a storage vendor. So what's right. interesting is, is that right. you know, they're, gonna, they're running to be a cloud meets big data company. So yeah. it's, we're seeing a much more of the swipe road to converge infrastructure piece. IBM is perfectly positioned to take storage as a very, um, uh, interesting piece on the chessboard, right. and and use it as a lever to integrate in. So that's why I'm looking at the systems management, the software, and the overall converged infrastructure. If they can pull that together, they can have a huge winning formula. And again, they could really just cut EMC's legs out, and and really look at the Oracle environments and just take a huge lead around this if they can execute. That's well, the I, systems right. companies have have been threatening to do this for decades, and and th thus far they haven't succeeded, but times are different. You know, the, the, the converged infrastructure trend is in their favor. Having said that, 
Who started the converged infrastructure trend? It was, it was EMC and yeah. Cisco with the whole V-Block yeah. you know, thing. So, so I'm impressed with EMC's ability to get ahead of, ahead of these trends. Having said that, you know, IBM's pure systems announcement, in my opinion, is the most impressive announcement to date of integrated systems. Having said that, it's three years after V-Block. Right, I think you also have to look at who's, who's the leader in some of the uh, uh, application areas that are getting a lot of attention. So IBM in, in data analytics, uh, and I know we're going to have some guests on, on later who are, are deeply involved in some of the uh, data analytics work that IBM's doing. Well, that drives a ton of storage. It may or may not be on an IBM platform, but IBM's going to be in the mix. Well, let me uh, ask you a question. Yeah. So here's the, here's the conundrum I think that IBM has from a product standpoint. From an ROI perspective, if I'm running products at IBM storage, I can probably get a better ROI by integrating with some DB2 capability than I can right. chasing EMC on some product features. I think that's true. At the same time, right. it's a, the, you know, the short-term ROI helps drive cash flow and it's, and it's well, profitability. That's, that's, their, that's their strategic dilemma, right? Do, do yes. they chase the P&L profits or invest for position in the, in the half a trillion dollar converged infrastructure market. So, you know, you, you know, the old expression, eat your own before someone else eats it. So cannibalize their current momentum. So they might go for the low hanging fruit to drive revenue. So, you know, so can we'll, you do both? I mean, that's the question they that we be really want to explore with, you think they can? Yeah, I mean, they have to. I mean, there's no doubt they have to. Otherwise, they'll miss some of the key vectors into the market around, especially around big data and flash. You look what flash is doing around the cloud and big data markets. It's enabling a whole set of new solutions. It perfectly fits into their integration and services strategy. So they got the field, sales force, they got the integration teams out there, they got the huge customers. The question is, customers will go somewhere else, EMC or Violin or somewhere else to get these solutions. So, I think they have to do both. So the other thing that, that is unique about IBM is, is it does get ahead of some of these mega trends, for example, China. I mean, right. it was first in China, and now they're pointing the, 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 the beast at Africa. IBM is investing in Africa in a huge way. IBM believes that Africa can become its new China. You don't hear that from any other company. Oh, you hear about brick companies, yeah. you know, brick yeah. plus, blah, blah, blah. IBM is going for it in Africa and will spend a lot of money and a lot of effort in there. And so where IBM does very well in these emerging, you know, mega regions like China, like Africa is does a lot of business with the governments because they're right. retooling industries. And they actually sell a lot of mainframes into those environments. Yeah. So to my point, if you're an IBM product person in storage, you can actually make a lot of money integrating with mainframe capabilities because they're high, super high margin. You look at IBM's average pricing on purpose-built backup appliance, appliances, it's, it's double or triple what HP gets. Why? Because it sells so much into the mainframe market. So there's huge margins there. So that is the is the strategic conundrum that Dave, John. You Dave mentioned. and John, I want to ask you guys before we kick off. This is the queue, by the way. We're SiliconAngle.tv is the queue where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise and share that with you. We're here at the IBM Innovate. I mean, uh, Edge 2012 uh, event. Storage Innovate is actually going on. Innovate's this week. going on, which is the software team. So IBM's got a lot of activities in the market going on right now. We're here covering it live and getting all the data for you. Um, so uh, Dave and then John, I'd like you guys to answer this uh, each, if you could. Um, what are you guys looking for this next two days from IBM? Um, or specifically around the innovation and the market opportunity. We talked about the convergent infrastructure market being a half a trillion dollars. We talked about some of the features around their, their, their management approach and organization. And then you talked about some of the products. What are you guys looking for? What um, key things do, does IBM need to show and talk about here this week that you're looking for? So for me, John, I really want to see is can IBM break out of that services first mode and really show that it can innovate in storage. And it's you know, key messages here, uh, efficient by design, uh, cloud agile, uh, you know, those, those are, those, those, and smarter storage, they sound good. I want to see if, the, if they resonate with customers and they can translate those branding messages into product action that customers can actually deploy and get value out of. That's what I think IBM has to prove at this event and subsequent activities. Yeah, and I, I want to see 
certainly IBM knows more about applications than just about anybody else on the planet, other than the pure software companies like SAP and, and, and well, formerly Oracle, right? But they know a lot about applications. So what I want to know is can they take their knowledge of applications and tra translate that into value add in terms of how their storage interacts with those applications to deliver a better total solution? Or are they going to instead go sort of uh, broad horizontal, I want to compete in storage. So that's that that I think is the, the, the main thing. I, yeah. I think they I, can. I'm looking for candid candid answers to the questions that we want to ask them around around those things. That's a good point. And 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 find out really look in their eyes and see if they actually have the innovation mojo. Yeah. Because a lot of the reorganizations in the past on IDM seem to be kind of like me to catch up. Um, you know they bought store wise and those acquisitions going on. I just want to see a package. I want to see IBM use the strategic nature of storage to really drive the solution, so. Well, the, the fact is that IBM's portfolio, much like HP's, was deficient. So it had to go out and, and buy Diligent and buy XIV. XIV was a major acquisition XIV was great. For, yeah. for IBM in yeah. the sense that it, it really didn't have, I mean it was OEMing from LSI, it was, it's still OEMing from them and, as well as uh, uh, now Ingenio, but in, in NetApp. So it was relying on OEM back to Bill Zeitler's R&D is growing faster than the market. Right. <clears throat> so it, you can't just, as you know, uh, John Furrier and John MacArthur, you look at what you know, Mark Hurd did at HP, he cut, he cut R&D. You can't just overnight say, okay, now we're going to start investing and have an impact. It takes years. So IBM is, you know, five or six years ago, really started down this path. And so the, the question is, you know, can they shine a light on that portfolio and can it have an impact? It's about time, right? Now is about the time. You're talking about five years from the point at which they said, okay, we're really going to go for it in storage, and they presumably got Palmasano's blessing mm -hmm. to do that. You know, so now is around, the, you know, five years is around the cycle where you should really start to see a market impact of gaining share. The, the challenge is it's a very competitive market. You got HP getting back, you know, getting serious. You got Dell beginning to do its own IP, and then, you know, EMC continuing to innovate and drive the narrative in the marketplace. What's the buzz out there pre-show? Last night, Dave, you and I both had some conversations with some folks from, from some partners with IBM. John, you talking to some folks coming in as we prepared uh, for this program these next two days. Um, what's your, what are you hearing on the ground? What do you, what, what, what's the buzz that uh, you can share with the audience out there pre-show um, around Edge this year? Well, I, I think, if I may, so the, I think the, the channel is something we haven't talked about. And that's a huge deal, right? The, the, there's, a big, there's a big land grab going on for the channel. And um, IBM has to participate in that. So if you're a channel partner of IBM, you really want to know, okay, where can I add value? Are you going to compete with me with your own services? Uh, and, and how can I work with you and integrate with you to get my products that you don't have currently in your portfolio out to the marketplace? Those are, I think, the things that IBM really has to you know, demonstrate at events like this and others. Yeah, and you know, I, I appreciate you bringing up the channel because I think that's really important. There was there's one major, you know, um, billion dollar plus uh, IBM partner at main, in Mainline who drives an enormous amount of IBM business. About a year and a half ago, I think it was, that they, they made a decision to actually add HP. They probably added HP at the worst possible time. The reason they added HP was because they found that there were there were deals in which they couldn't be price competitive and. You know, nobody can drive prices down better than HP and Dell. If, if they if they decide they want to win a deal based on price, they can do it. And so, they were looking for some alternatives to to, to be able to do that. Well, you know, I talked to some of the folks there since, and they're going, "Well, not sure, not sure about that decision now." You know, so and I, so I think I see them shifting more of their focus back to IBM. Yeah. So uh, we're here. This is SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of IBM Edge. This is the Cube where we go live into events, we extract knowledge, we, we bring you the signal, not the noise, um, although you can hear a lot of noise around us, but uh, so, uh, let's see, I am at D. Vellante, he is at Furrier, and you are? Oh, way too long, at JT MacArthur so, 56, whoa. Okay, yeah. at JT MacArthur 56, but so yeah. at Furrier, at Vellante, at JT MacArthur 56, uh, tweet us if you have questions. Uh, we got a number of guests coming up, we're going to have Brian Truskowski, who's the general manager of IBM's uh, storage division, we have a number of uh, uh, partners, we have uh, uh, some CIOs coming on, we've got uh, some analysts coming on uh, from ESG and some, some other uh, independent folks that we're going to bring you the perspective on this event and really try to address these, 
these and other questions. Yeah, and, and stay tuned here, because we're going to be at the Cube here in, in Orlando, and then we're going to uh, Las Vegas with HP later in the week, back-to-back uh, -back events. And really, this is about the consumerization of IT. Two-thirds of all the enterprises, large enterprises, will be moving to converged infrastructure, which means a complete retweak of their infrastructure, adding new technologies, new services, to deliver applications and business value. And, and, and the conversation will range from big data, cloud, uh, we'll be here covering it uh, in theCUBE, and also we'll get geeky, we'll, we'll get deep around some of the storage um, technologies that are strategic, flash, software, and uh, it's all changing, and we're here covering it live. So stay tuned to siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv is where the live feed is, and uh, we'll be right back with our next guest, and we want to thank IBM for their uh, support, so watch their ads, they bring us this, they allow us to bring this independent coverage to you, live at their events, so watch their ads, they're really cool, and uh, we'll do our thing, and so IBM can provide their ads to you. So we'll be right back for our next guest here inside theCUBE.